travel well. I think we'll bring, bring up a big crowd. I know Milford's an enthusiastic uh, town and they love their sports, especially football. So uh, hopefully it's just a great night. Uh, happy Halloween to everyone. And have a safe night. Hopefully we win. <laughs> Something you can't ignore. You know, the, these guys have been, uh, you know, playing against each other since, you know, they're little and, and um, you know, it's just something where we're going to go out, we're going to battle, we're going to play hard, you know, we're going to keep it clean and, and have a good competitive football game. Uh, but there's no question both teams want to win and, and, you know, we're going to be pretty hungry to go out there and get our first home playoff win. I feel like uh, everyone's been developing nicely. Uh, progress of the whole year, and that's all we can ask for. Hope get a ter good turnout for fans and a good environment to play in. Yeah, it's actually really exciting. Earlier in the season, we had gone to a uh, game to watch a team we were playing, and Milford was actually the team that they were playing. It's, uh, we were kind of rooting for them, and now going into it, we're kind of like on the other side. So it's an interesting aspect to play against this team. We had no idea whether we would have played them. Uh, it's going to be a very intense game. I mean, there's everyone. We know each other, uh, all of us. We know some of the Hawkinson kids. Some kids have them on baseball teams, all that type. And I mean, there's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot of emotional, sorry, a lot of emotions in the game. I mean, it's gonna be whether or not we move on. So it'll be a good game. We're excited about it. We ha we haven't played them yet, but since they're closed town, it, get, it gets more interesting, and it's gonna be a fight. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. I mean, just playing a town that's right next to us. There's already a lot of beef going along. Just because we're right here, we can talk to each other an arm's distance away. So yeah, it's gonna be great. Or Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, they're all over it talking about us. The new playoff system in MIAA football has created some terrific rivalries. On Halloween night 2014, Hopkinton and Milford would meet up to fight for their playoff lives. It would be a great matchup for a Hillers team which only had seven players returned from the 2013 season and a Scarlet Hawks team which returned 25 players. Both teams gave it their all in the crosstown rivalry. The day before the game, I caught up with Hopkinton head coach Jim Gerard. Coach, can you tell us how you feel heading into the playoffs in this game against Milford? We feel excited as a staff, as a, as a team. Um, Milford's a really, really good team this year. I'm playing the Hockamock, small division. Finished with a 4-3 and three record or in the four seed. Uh, we know a little bit about them. We haven't played them before in the past few years, but they, um, they're good, they're big and physical up front offensively. Uh, they have really good skilled kids, and like we talked about earlier, they return uh, a number of starters on both sides of the ball. So uh, they can certainly pose problems with their quickness and speed at the skill positions. Um, you know, we're excited about the opportunity. It's certainly going to be a challenging football game, but we feel like we've made a lot of progress in the past few weeks, so uh, hopefully that'll carry us over into the game. It's been a, kind of an up and down season win loss wise, but uh, lately uh, the, the offense has been showing some very good signs. They uh, put up uh, 64 points uh, in that one game against Dover Sherborne. Um, this team seems to have uh, come a long way uh, despite uh, a good amount of young players on the roster. Right, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, we are an inexperienced team without a doubt. We only return um, seven um, starters. In both sides of the ball combined. So uh, we knew going into this season would have an inexperienced team. I think that showed and that has shown over the course of the season with some of the inconsistency on um, both sides of the ball, more so on defense. Um, but in the defensive side of the ball, we, we only returned one starter, actually. So I think you're kind of seeing the inexperience coming through. But the kids are working hard. You know, they're trying to absorb what we're teaching them. And um, 
you know, a couple plays here and there could be a difference between, uh, you know, from a three and four to a five and two season at this point. So um, TVL Large is a really competitive league, and hopefully that'll uh, have us battle tested going into uh, into Friday night, tomorrow night against Milford. And coach, how do you feel about this new playoff system? It's the second year now, and we seem to get a lot of great matchups out of it. Yeah, I mean, last year worked out really well for us um, so far. You know, I really can't assess it at this point. Um, I guess we have to go through a, a second year, and that's when the reevaluation process will happen with the MIA and the Mass Coaches Association. But um, it certainly has. It's presented some uh, some very competitive games. Um, I think there's pros and cons to it, and we'll certainly assess it uh, when the season's over and see how we're going to vote on it next year. Absolutely. Um, and, Coach, at the beginning of the season, did you ever think you'd be playing uh, Milford right next door? Yeah, actually, I, I live in town in Milford as well. So um, my son will be there with his Milford football jersey on. I'm sure he plays in the youth leagues. Um, yeah, it's not, it's certainly nice to have a short bus ride uh, one way or the other. Um, but, yeah, that's nice because there were a couple games last year, at least one, that we had to travel a pretty good distance. And I think that's one of the reasons, one of the cons of, of, of the playoff system is the um, – the bus, the bus traveling uh, time and distance for families to get to games, but certainly with Milford, it's uh, it's a good situation, not an issue there. And on Halloween night, I think there'll be good support for both teams, seeing that the game's right next door. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, we'll travel well. I think we'll bring bring a, a big crowd. I know Milford's an enthusiastic uh, town, and they love their sports, especially football. So uh, hopefully, it's just a great night. Uh, happy Halloween to everyone. And, have a safe night. Hopefully we win. <laughs> I then caught up with head coach of the Milford Scarlet Hawks, Joe Todd. I feel to be heading into the playoffs. It's great. Um, you know, great opportunity for our, our guys, especially our seniors. You know, we, we've worked so hard throughout the offseason and, you know, throughout the season. Had some good wins. You know, had a couple tough losses, but it, like I said, it's been a great year. And uh, I think right now, you know, we're at a time where we're peaking. And, uh, you know, we ran the ball really well last week. Um, you know, we got to try to have a little bit more balance in our offense, you know, get the ball in the air a little bit. But, um, you know, we're still trying to get better, still trying to play, you know, good defense and, uh, you know, see what we can do in the playoffs. Now, a lot of returning players this year, I believe it was 25 return, uh, returning players, 17 starters. Uh, so the experience factor must help Milford. And this team has come a tremendous way in your second year of coaching. Uh, so it must uh, feel good to see uh, such a progressive effort. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, having 17 guys back, you know, that was huge. Um, you know, to have all the experience, but not only experience, we've got some great players. You know, we've got you know great offensive line. We've got some some skilled guys, and uh, you know it's been exciting to, to, to coach this you know this group. Um, you know they can't say enough good things about these guys, and and uh, so we're excited as coaches to to be able to coach these guys. Now you had a couple quarterbacks, uh, John Hearn, Zach Lanzetta, and uh, you, you switch it up uh, from time to time. Uh, can you tell us anything about what the situation will be like in the Hopkinton game? Is uh, Hearns going to get most of the time? Is it going to be a switch-up effort? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's always a, a tough call because you know they both have their strengths. You know, obviously it's no secret Zach's. You know, he's a he's more of a passer, and John's more of a runner. Uh, but at the same time, John can throw and Zach can run, and you know, John will get the start, um, but they're both going to play, and you know, we we. We try to split it up, you know, based off of what's going on in the game. Um, you know, if John has a long run and, and he's a little gassed, we want to get a, a fresh guy in there or um, whatever the situation may be. But, um, you know, some people say if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Uh, I don't really believe that. I think we have two good quarterbacks. So we're excited to be able to play both of them. Absolutely. Now, uh, Friday, you're playing Crosstown rival Hopkinton. Uh, there must be some excitement in the air uh, playing uh, yeah. Hopkinton. Yeah, I mean, you know, we try not to get too much into the, you know, that, you know, that part of it, but it's something you can't ignore. You know, the, these guys have been, uh, you know, playing against each other since, you know, they're little, and, and um, you know, it's just something where we're going to go out, we're going to battle, we're going to play hard, you know, we're going to keep it clean and, and have a good competitive football game. Uh, but there's no question both teams want to win, and, and, you know, we're going to be pretty hungry to go out there and get our first home playoff win. Friday night. Playoff football coming up on First Class Radio. The three and four Hopkinton Hillers taking on the four and three Milford Scarlet Hawks. Tom Nappy alongside Jared Aldi. And before the break, you just heard from head coach of the Hopkinton Hillers, Jim Gerard, and head coach of the Milford Scarlet Hawks, 
Joe Todd and Jared, you think about this rivalry, you think about how close the towns are and the relationships some of these players have, have had uh, and the real relationships some of them have. Uh, a lot of the, the Hillers and the Milford players have played football together in their youth days. Some of them play Legion baseball together. Uh, Matt Decina, he's on the Milford team. He's playing for the Hoppington Hillers. So these players are very familiar with each other. They grew up playing against each other on the football field. And for the first time in many years, they get to play against each other in a high school game. What do you think it's going to be like out there? I, I think it is going to be quite intense. And I think whenever two teams have a relationship like this, it makes for a great game. Well, yeah, exactly. When you have that mutual respect, there's one thing, but they're both playing with the same common goal to win. They want to advance. Hopkinton had their first appearance last year in the playoffs, won their first home, their first round game, unfortunately uh, uh, fell in their second, uh, second round game. This is Milford's first ever appearance in the playoffs, so this is big for them. They're at home. You know, friendship kind of gets set aside for now, and it's time for business. And we are set for kickoff from Milford High School. The Scarlet Hawks kicking off right to left in their at-home red jerseys with the silver wing on the helmet and the white numbering and lettering. And the kickoff will sail to the near side and bounce in front of the 22 and actually stop on the ground and be returned up to about the 35 on the near side. And that is where the Hopkinton Hillers will start their first offensive drive of the game and they're away white jerseys with the green numbering and lettering with the orange outline and the green and white stripes running down the pant leg. It's a beautiful 48 degree night, a beautiful night for football, slight breeze in the air. There's actually a good amount of wind on that field so that will certainly be something to watch out for as quarterback in shotgun, a two back set. And it, he, Pat Ryan's going to take this to the far side, and he is going to pick up next to nothing, maybe even a slight loss on that play. But a nice after the first play of the game, quarterback Pat Ryan would make a costly mistake. 36 yard line, Ryan in the shotgun. It's a two back set, takes the snap, rolling out to the near side under pressure, throws downfield, and it's intercepted by Quinton Orr. Intercepts it. A few plays later, the Milford Scarlet Hawks would make the Hopkinton Hillers pay for that interception. Again in the pistol, this time it's a handoff to Jonathan Rodriguez. He'll take it up the near side, finds a wide open hole, and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. A 24 yard touchdown run for Jonathan Rodriguez, and the Milford Scarlet Hawks strike first. The first quarter was all Scarlet Hawks as they would force a three and out to get the ball back and add on to their lead. As Hearns lines back up in the pistol, back to his right, will take the snap under pressure, will take it to the far side and will sweep for a first down and a little bit more as he's pushed out of bounds at around the 10. Hearns lined up in the gun and back to his left man in the backfield. It's going to be handoff to the up back. It's Blake Hill, and he got in for the touchdown. A four-yard touchdown run for Blake Hill. And the Scarlet Hawks are on top, 12 to nothing. Jake Keller would come into the game, and the Hopkinton Hillers would head into the second quarter with some momentum. Pistol back to his left, two receivers either side, takes a snap. Looking downfield, will throw downfield as Hayden Pereira on the far side. He jumps up and hauls it in. And that is going to be a first down for the Hillers and move the ball to around the 18 yard line, a 21 yard reception for Hayden Pereira. Center, Donahue in the backfield and Donahue takes it up the middle for the two yard touchdown and the Hillers are on the board. Hillers back in the game, makes it 12 to six. The Hopkinton Hillers were back in the game, but the Milford Scarlet Hawks experienced offense would take advantage of an inexperienced Hillers defense. As Zach Lanzetta, the Scarlet Hawks quarterback, lines up in the pistol. It's a handoff and coming up the middle is Quinton Orr and he gets to around midfield. What a 15 yard pickup by Quinton Orr. That puts Hopkinton right back in the uh, driver's seat. And Zeta lined up in the gun, back to his left. 
It's a three receiver set with two to the near side. Hand off to Quinton. Oh, and he breaks through and runs in a completely open field into the end zone. A touchdown for the Milford Scott Ox, a 44 yard touchdown run for Quinton Orr. They indeed will go for two. Lanzetta lined up in the gun. Maranta to his left man in the backfield, and it is a handoff taken up the middle. Blake Hill for the two point conversion, excuse me, and that will make it 20 to seven as Blake Hill converts and the Scarlet Hawks lead the Hopkinton Hillers by 13, 6-27 left to go in the first half. Back in at quarterback for the Hillers, it's Jay Keller. Third and 10, so the Hillers tried a little bit of trickery. Scarlet Hawks just not having it. Keller lined up in the gun, back to his left, two receivers spread out to either side, takes the snap, back pedals, looking downfield, will throw to the near side, it's knocked in the air and intercepted by Steven Luna. And Luna comes up the near side, taken out of bounds, just past the 45, and the Scarlet Hawks offense gets the ball back. These Scarlet Hawks cornerbacks they are not easy to beat downfield, and they are winning the matchup so far tonight against these Hillers receivers. Second interception of the game for the Scarlet Hawks. On uh, Quinton Orr is to his left. Receiver spread out to either side with Murata in the slot to the right. It's a handoff to Quinton Orr, and he breaks up the middle, and he gets inside the 10. At 10 a.m. as Hearns set to take the snap with Orr to his left. And he is going to take this himself, finds the seam up the middle, and gets into the end zone. A nine yard touchdown run, John Hearns. And the Scarlet Hawks are in control. Overs. Hearns in the gun, Murata to his right, takes a snap, and he is going to take it to the near side himself. And he broke the plane for the two point conversion. A 28 to seven lead for the Milford Scarlet Hawks. Don't forget, each and every touchdown. Hayden Pereira would have a nice kickoff return and the Hopkinton Hillers would march downfield before the half ended. He is going to run all over the field trying to find a hole. We'll take it now to the far side from the near side. will be brought down at around the 40 and that is where the Hillers offense will come back out. And from the 11 yard line, Keller lined up in the gun. Donahue to his left, two receivers either side, someone jumped. And it is going to be a free play for the Hillers, and he throws to the end zone, and it's hauled in for the touchdown. And it was DeSena hauling it in, 11-yard touchdown reception. There was a flag, but it must have been on Milford. The Milford Scarlet Hawks and the Hopkinton Hillers. Some quality entertainment. Four touchdowns combined in the second quarter alone, two by each team. Scarlet Hawks converting two two-point conversions. But the Hillers still alive, still very well in this game. And coming through on that last drive was huge. Kicking off right to left across your radio. It's a 28 to 13 game. Quinton Orr as Donahue keeps this on the ground. They're trying an onsider. Not a very good onsider diving right on it. Is Alex Masick, the sophomore. And the Scarlet Hawks will have good field position here. And Jared, what does that show you? The Hillers don't have a lot of faith in their defense. Well, you, you know, the thing is, too, they were trying to do, like, a little, once again, a little bit of a trickery, too, try to catch Milford napping, and Milford is just not falling for any of this. At the start of the second half, momentum would start to swing in the Hillers' favor. Spread out to the far side, one of the near, takes the snap, looking downfield, will throw up the middle, and it is in and out of the hands of Blake Hill. Good defensive coverage. Pat Ryan, Andrew Donahue on defense there. And Jared, you mentioned it in the beginning of the game. Pat Ryan does play both sides of the ball. So does Drew Donahue, the feature back for the Hillers. And it's not a whole lot. You see your starting quarterback playing on both sides of the ball. Fortunately for the Hillers, they do have Jay Keller they could switch it off to to give Ryan a breather. As the uh, Scarlet Hawks will punt it away on fourth and 16. And this is an ugly punt, end over end. We'll take a bounce at the Scarlet Hawks, 42 and out of bounds. And the Hillers have very good field position. 
So perhaps the table's turning a little bit on the Scarlet Hawks. Right up in the pistol, Donahue in the backfield, two receivers either side, takes a snap, and it is a screen thrown to the far side. It will be taken up the far sideline, and it was Pat Ryan on the reception and the first down. Donahue to his right, Pat Ryan still in there as a receiver, two to either side, and he will hand it off to Donahue, breaks up the middle, and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. A 24-yard touchdown run for Drew Donahue and the Hopkinton Hillers are right back in the game. Despite the Hillers comeback, the Scarlet Hawks were not going away anytime soon. Sad and Hearns is going to take this himself up the middle, finds an opening and will burst through for a first down to around the 25 yard line. He stays right at the 16, Hearns in the gun, back to his left, receiver to either side. Takes the snap and is going to take this himself. Up the far side, hash marks and into the end zone. A 16 yard touchdown run, John Hearns. His second touchdown of the game. Hey, let's see if he makes this one. And he got it. A 35 to 19 lead for the Scarlet Hawks. 5.09 left to go in the third quarter. Despite another Scarlet Hawks touchdown, the fight was still not over for the Hopkinton Hillers. The snap to Keller, who is lined up in the pistol, will throw up the middle, has a receiver, and it's hauled in. And with Nylik Fester on his back, a huge reception. And it was Pat Ryan on the big pickup for the Hopkinton Hillers. Keller lined up in the pistol. Donahue to his left, four receiver set, two to either side. It's a handoff to Donahue, who will fight towards the five yard line. Keller lined up in the gun, Donahue to his right. Two receivers lined up to the far side with a man on the near side. It's a handoff taken up the middle and into the end zone for the touchdown is Drew Donahue. A five yard touchdown run for Drew Donahue, his third touchdown of the game. And the Hopkinton Hillers are not going away, a 35 to 25 ball game. And Pat Ryan's better off in the receiver roll as Keller takes a snap from the shotgun. Rolls to his right under pressure, will throw to the end zone. And it was good. The Hillers defense continued to struggle as the Scarlet Hawks would put themselves in good position heading into the fourth quarter. It's a two back set, we'll hand it off to the up back coming up the middle, it's Blake Hill. And he will get close to the first down. Gets to his left. And he will take this himself up the middle, working his way through a few defenders, pushing forward towards the five, brought down at around the seven. But a yard on that pickup, and that will end the third quarter, but the Scarlet Hawks are second and two at the Hillers' two-yard line when we head to the fourth. Or second and goal, I should say, and pushing Hearns forward into the end zone for the touchdown. Blake Hill really just pushed Hearns through the defensive line for the touchdown. And Jared, how about John Hearns? Three rushing touchdowns. Seven lead for the Scarlet Hawks after the third touchdown run by John Hearns. End over end, sails back to the 20 yard line. Hayden Pereira will test the far side, now comes back towards the near side, finds an opening, and will be brought down by Quinton Orr just past midfield. So the Hillers offense will start off with some pretty good field position. Keller lined up in the pistol, Donahue to his right, and once again it was three receivers to the far side, takes the snap, he's gonna throw it down, field, and it's intercepted! On the interception, it was Steven Luna! And that was a risky play. The Hopkinton Hillers stayed alive by forcing Milford three and out to get the ball back. Fourth and four, and the punt will sail to the far side and be fairly caught by DeSena. Will give the Hillers some very good field position as they will be in Milford territory at their 39-yard line. Keller once again in the gun with Donahue to his right. It's a handoff to Donahue, takes it up the middle, finds a hole, and will get a first down and more as he gets inside the 20. Keller back out in the gun. 
Donahue to his left, and they're going to try Donahue again. And Donahue is going to go off tackle the far side. A wide open field in front of him. And he is in there for the touchdown. A 19-yard touchdown run by Drew Donahue. And actually, they may try to kick it here. They are. So they got Adam Giordano out there, the kicker. It is 41-33, to so you want to try to at least make it a seven-point game. A big extra point attempt here. The snap, the kick, and it's good. A 41-34 to game. Seven minutes, 13 seconds left. The suspense has built here at Milford High School. And what more can you expect when you have a matchup in the playoffs between Hopkinton and Milford? Hearns in the gun, man in the backfield. It is Quinton Orr up the middle for the first down. Hearns back out onto the field with the offense. Line up in the pistol, back to his left. Two receivers to the near side. Takes this himself up the middle. A first down and more as he races to the near side inside the 10 and brought out of bounds inside the five. A huge pickup for John Hearns. And they are going to push forward. And Lanzetta will take it himself, get in the end zone. Two yard touchdown run, Zach Lanzetta. And the Scarlet Hawks lead 47 to 34. Walpole and Bishop Fian. As the extra point will sail through and it's 48 to 34. The Milford Scarlet Hawks leading the Hopkinton Hillers. It was a tremendous matchup between the crosstown rivals, but in the end, Milford came out on top. The 430 yards of rushing for the Scarlet Hawks set a school record, and so did the fact Milford did not complete one pass the entire game. Quarterback John Hearns had three touchdowns in what was a tremendous playoff game.